YouTubers Brian Proctor back again with another video and this one is keys to drawing background in comics part two and the reason this is here so that you won't stare at a blank page while I'm discussing some stuff so keys to drawing background okay first of all let's go way way back to the very beginning and this is hard because I had a um, subscriber write in and say well when is the next one and I told him it's not easy to do to take something that covers a, a large range of everything basically and then break it down to its most simplest but I'm glad that this person did write to me because that tells me somebody's out there waiting for the next part to my videos so let's break backgrounds down to its basic simplest design whatever and go from there so what is a background a background is what you see behind your main characters or it could be the objects behind your characters or the space behind your characters so that's the background what you see that's going to be placed behind your characters um, now it could be inside or outside it could be day or night now if it's night that's kind of a good thing because you can use a lot of shadows to hide stuff if you're not a great background drawer so that's a good thing but you have to have um, a good sense shall we say of light and shadow you have to always know where your light is going to go so or where your light source is so let me find a good thing so if you had whatever a box what kind of box is that here and your light source was here you know so you know, your shadow would come maybe like about here so you have to be able to do this kind of thing and it's hard to draw and talk at the same time and you know some 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 great shadow people might say oh that's wrong this won't come like that it'll come down like this so, but basically you have to know especially if you're got a lot of light in the dark so if your your people are in a cave or something or in a sewer and they have one overhead light source or a couple overhead light sources that helps to know how to do light and shadow and the light would not come all over the shadow would not come all the way up there because you're getting some light that's curving around but that's another story so uh, but a good tip is and i've got some notes here a good tip is and i tell people that to watch a movie and uh turn the sound down turn the sound not down turn the sound off and watch it because usually when you do your you in a movie let me go back it's so much on my mind I'm trying to get it all out and some is coming out before the other anytime you watch a movie the first thing they're gonna do is give you that, that establishing shot usually you look at a movie and they'll have something flying over a city so you know that this starts in New York or Chicago or whatever or somebody will be in the shower taking a shower they'll show their feet or something and then they'll pan up and you know that this person is in the shower and then maybe they'll pan the camera up and then you see the guy or girl or whatever and they'll come out of the shower and you know they're in the bathroom and then they'll go into the bedroom and the bedroom could be you can see at that point that person let's say a man that person is a bachelor he could be like a detective or something because they'll show maybe the gun on the dresser or he could be a family man and they may show either his wife in bed still asleep or they might show pictures of the kids on the dresser so, so pictures of kids on his dresser yeah that's right so things like that you have to think about the first thing you have to think about is where is this taking place what room or what 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 where is it taking place at then you have to determine what's in this room and let's just let's just go for a room let's just say it is an office you know say um, the opening shot is of a building scene and I don't want to draw that because I have to see it in my head it's the city and um, then it'll zoom down on like one window and here's a close-up of the window and the um, uh, part, um, skyscraper skyscrapers and then you go into the window and you'll see some things and then it's an office so you have like the desk in the office you know the, the big chair behind the desk the phone the whatever uh, pictures on the uh, pictures frames you know because he graduated from whatever whatever a lot of papers cluttering the desk because the guy's really busy 
uh, maybe another chair here for people to sit down and talk to. So if it is in an office or wherever it is, you have to say to yourself, what's in this office? What's in this office? If you don't know what's in the office, it could be like a the little office of the, the mail guy or it could be the CEO's office. So those things you have to think about. And then you, if you don't know what a CEO's office looks like, as I said in the other video, uh, Google it. Google and find out just image images of CEO offices or expensive office furniture or whatever. So you have to think about that. And once you do that, a good thing is, let me slow down because I have some more notes and I don't wanna go too far yet. Let's see what I have. And it'd be easier to see if I put glasses on because old age really sucks. Where does it take place? What's in the room? Okay, what is the, where is the camera placed? So let's just say, let me pause this for a second and I'll draw something up real quick and we'll continue. No, uh, I've decided to, I'll just draw this while you guys are looking because it is a uh, drawing video. So I should be drawing instead of um, pretending or drawing off camera. So, and this is rough now. So this is, this is the bathroom that I said earlier. So let's say, this is a weird tub. And then over here we have the toilet. Bug. Nats is gnat season. I hate gnats. And then you have your floor. That tub is a little too high on the floor. And you have your mirror here. And let's say this is a sink here. And your pipes and all this stuff is is you 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 look at stuff you study it and then it becomes like second nature to when you draw stuff period and there's a little carpet here now mirror frame medicine chest whatever you have a little what would be over the tub okay a little shower thing so he's gonna have to like a shower curtain he would have to have a little shower curtain or a rod that would run across since it's going that way the shower curtain would be here and it would like run that way and i'm not gonna put the curtain up there let's just say okay that's your that's your bathroom so you establish your background now what you have to do is determine where your camera is going to be placed is your camera going to be placed down here and here's just a little camera is your camera going to be placed here or is your camera going to be placed up here? And then from there, you know what part of the bathroom that you're going to draw and from what angle. So let's say if you put your person here, he's kind of like leaning over the sink. It's early morning. He's leaning on the sink. Maybe he's holding his face. He's got, he got a shave or something like that. He's like rubbing his beard. It's a raggedy tub. But anyway, where's your camera going to be placed? Let's just say for the sake of this shot, the camera's going to be placed like right behind him right there so what you have to do is take out let's use red you have to take out everything that you don't need and say this is the part that i need right here and then you just draw that and a good thing to do is now i'm back on track is i did let me sh let me get that for you guys Okay, I did this thing in another video back, and this is basically just a, a checkerboard pattern, and it's on the back of a sketch pad, just the thick paper that's on the back of the sketch pad, and I cut out these little pa this paper and I glued it to make objects so that I can basically design my room to know where everything's at at all times. And it just, you would tilt the camera angle up to, to show, you know, where something's at. 
and if you're fortunate enough to have some figures you can you know place the figures wherever but the whole thing is to allow you to understand where your objects are placed in your background so a good thing to do is to always design i mean if you're serious about this you should be doing this anyway design your rooms out uh by doing a floor plan a floor plan and if you have no idea what a floor plan is look that up too a floor plan is basically just a drawing of your building or your floor looking straight down so let's just say you have a big square room you have a door right here and you have another door right here so you have your two doors you can have a window here and a window here and uh what else was i going to say hey james no your window okay your furniture you come in you have a door let's just say you have a couch here and this is a fake looking upside up couch looking up there and you have a rug here uh let's say a round table on top of the rug and there's like a flower pot on top of the table uh what else what is that that's a that's a door so the door swings in and a lot of times well let's make the door swinging out the door swings out this door swings in so nothing will be here and the door swings out you come over here and let's just say there's a dresser here i don't know what kind of room this is this is just a room and a lamp post a lamp post a lamp one of those standing tall lamps right there so there's your room and then you have your man wherever but let's just put that later no no let's put the man let's just put the man right here so from the top he's like this and his arms and his feet so there's your man standing there so now you have to be able to take this room and turn it up on turn it sideways and i'll do it like this i was gonna change that so oh i almost lost it for a second here is my couch which is a little space here here's my couch here at the back of my couch here's the it had armrest uh had a table right here carpet you wouldn't see here's my door right here and the door is open so there's my door because this is the entry i have a lamp here in this corner and a dresser but you wouldn't see this so so yeah i just i screwed that up forget that lamp you wouldn't see this wall here because the camera would be right here facing this way so forget that lamp so you see this that and you have a big picture window right there so you have your carpet and you had your guy and he's standing somewhat in front of the couch so my guy is going to be right here he's a little skinny guy but he's going to be right there so these are elements that you have to remember uh when you're drawing so if i did that again and why do i keep putting this up when i'm going to use this this let's just say i'm going to change that angle to and i'm seeing it in my head and it's just jumping out of my head for whatever reason to this is the guy's shoulders so he turned and looked at the door which is over here so the corner of the door is here so this is the corner so let's just say this is the corner here and the doorway here and the door is opened and he's looking this way and somebody's coming around that corner and he could be waving at the guy hey joe not time for coffee so knowing your floor plan you're able to put the person in the same place when you change the angle if that makes sense it should make sense because it did make sense in my head a second ago but that's your first step doing your floor plan especially if 
like to say, what was it, Justice League? What was that thing? The Hall of Justice. If they continue to go back to that same place, if this is your character and this is his apartment, you want to have a floor plan that's not going to change. So every time he goes back to his apartment, it doesn't change in the book. So when you're going to issue 12 and somebody's like, wait a minute, his table was here, his couch was there they'll know that they're in his apartment unless you show him buying a new table from Ikea or something, then that table should always be there. And I forgot to put the flowers on the table like that. So this is one of the keys to drawing background. And if you noticed, notice, and I'll save that for later, let me show these pictures because I mentioned in the first video about uh, doing this video, doing a video on backgrounds and how I had a friend that kept telling me, do a background, do a background video. And I said, you know, backgrounds are from like A to Z is really hard because you might want to see the inside of a store or a restaurant and somebody else might want to do the inside of a nuclear submarine. So let me show you this real quick. If I can do this, it should come out on the final video. Okay. So here you have an image of the inside of a nuclear submarine now that's an older submarine it's not the the 2018 model because they didn't invite me to film it yet so i got an older model of the submarine of a submarine and i believe this is the where you do the steering at to drive the submarine and this is the interior of a restaurant so definitely a big difference between the two pictures but they both have a similarity that I want you to kind of take a look at. I'm going to give you the, uh, the, the, um, I'll give you a second to kind of look and see, you know, what, what is the same in both pictures. And the answer would be, doo, 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 doo. yeah, y'all don't know that music. Anyway, the answer would be squares, squares and rectangles. And as I said, in the earlier video, if you didn't see the earlier video, go back and look at part one. Everything in life is a square, circle, and triangle. You master those three shapes, and then you will be able to draw anything. So once you master them and you'll be able to and then uh, work on your perspective, then you'll be able to draw just about anything. As I said, there's not too many triangles in the world, um, but there's mostly squares which would be rectangles and circles which would be cylinders and the triangle would be kind of like that lamp i showed you let me do this to show you guys again that lamp here is my pen my brush so let's see if you can see again if you did a triangle like that and this is the lamp. This is my base comes down and this is the, the part that it sits on. If you chop that off right there and get rid of this, then you have your lamp. And then some lamps have the button, some lamps have the little string, Depend, depends on what type of lamp you wanna draw. So as I said, there's not too many triangles uh, in the world other than the pyramids. So you have to worry about your squares and your circles, which would become rectangle and cylinders or wheels or whatever uh, would become. And that's a big wheel right there. So the, that's your homework. So you need to every day when you're not drawing seriously, you need to be drawing circles, triangles, um, squares, rectangles, cylinders, and then just putting it into perspective as best you can. Any angle that you can put a square into, you need to be doing it just over and over and over again. Uh, just continue to do that. And each one, as you draw them, just know that they're going to go in perspective in some way. And this one goes way back here like that. And then you do your line and then you can continue what you need to do. And your line is here. Your line is there. That's above. So you see the bottom. That's basically right through the center. So you just see the side and that line is on the top. So uh, that line is above it. So you'll see the top of the square. And that's just doing basic 
perspective. So let's just say I was going to draw the inside of that submarine. I needed that submarine as a reference to my character. So let's do a pencil. Basically, I have this wall here. And it's not going to be completely detailed. I have the wall here, a little piece of wall here that goes back. And then I have a wall here that goes kind of like that. Now, basically, on these three walls, let's just say I put my chair here. And my chair is just another rectangle. It's leaning back. And here are the arms, which are just more rectangles. And the other arm comes here. Let's just make it out here. And then the seat itself comes here. And now I'm going to end up inking it anyway. This is the actual chair itself, or the seat itself. So there's a chair. Let's say I put my character right here. And he's going to be driving the sub. And you wouldn't see that other arm. You wouldn't see that side of the chair. And he has a little control panel, and I'll just ink this. I didn't want to ink it because, start out to ink because it, it's not going to be as clean, but hopefully you'll see it. And this is on a panel, and then he has a panel right here, and that goes up. And then you have just some more gadgets on the little screen. You have like a little TV, and this, this, is, this is this screen right here, and it's, it's a little off. But I'm just going to just do what I do. And you have another thing and you have your little lines or, or controls, not controls, little hooks that you pull the panel in. You have buttons here. And I could do this all day, but I'm not going to do it all day. But I'm just showing you everything that I'm drawing is just rectangles and squares. The more buttons and so forth you put in, the control panel, the more uh, science fiction-y science fiction it looks. And then you have the thing again, and more buttons. And it's just the same thing over and over and over. You know, if I wanted to, I could put a big screen here so the guy can see where the submarine is traveling, and some fish out there, and some plant life. And then, you know, more stuff over here. There is some some... Uh, manual looks like it's on the wall and there's just a panel and there's some screws there and another panel lifted up and over here there looks like it's a breaker box and that's coming out of the wall here it looks like there is the sonar or radar because radar is shaped like that with some writing here underneath there's a long panel and you get the gist because as I say it's just rectangles even the chair was basically a rectangle the arm of the chair was a rectangle the only hard part would have been doing the guy so same thing with the restaurant if i did the restaurant and i'm not gonna draw a restaurant because you get the, you get the point it's just all rectangles oh yeah rectangles rectangle here when you go straight up is here and this would be the the perspective point somewhere Somewhere out here. Same thing with this one. That goes to the same point. Uh, your chairs go to the same point. Over here, it goes to the same point. This, this goes to the same. So it's all going to that one point, which is probably like way off the page somewhere. Uh, even these here go there. Um, so this would be a, like a two-point perspective. So wherever that is, because these, this wall, these, these, these frames here are going way over here somewhere so uh, I'm trying to see what else would go even if you're drawing the placements for the, the lights the lights would be the same way you have to have the lights all in another section so if if I drew another set of lights it would have to go on this line so we get the the, the one bulb here the second one there and, and they're round so you'd have to keep that in mind. 
second one there, the third one there, and then it would come down however the, these things are shaped. And another one would be up here, behind here, and then you'd have the chain. So background is basically shapes in perspective. That's it. As I say, you have to determine where that character is going to be at. Is he in a nuclear submarine? Is he in a restaurant? Where did that paper go? Do your floor plan of where this is going to be, where this table going to be. And I'll do another one because that's just what I do. Restaurant. Doorway. Say table here, table here, table here, table here, table one long table here. So my person is going to be, let's just make it hard and just say he's going to be sitting at this table right here. So then I turn it sideways or to see a side view. We have your door, we have a table here, table here, space, table here. The guy is sitting at the table right here. There's his chair right there. Now, because it's sideways, this long table, and I will just drop this long table just so that you can see it, the artist's privileges, right there on the side. And then you can have somebody right here sitting at that long table. So that person would be here sitting at that table. And then, of course, if you have your pictures and, you know, your paintings or whatever on the wall, that it'll be like that. And here's your door there, and there's no door here. So... As I say, floor plan, put your people where you want to put it and then draw it up and you can light table it. I don't know if I mentioned light table in the, the other video, but a lot of artists will do things like this. They'll put it on a light table and then they will crop out the part that they want or the part, crop out the part that they don't want. So instead of drawing all of this background here and here, you might just need this piece here, right there, just enough for the dialogue for these guys here. And then again, you might say, okay, I don't need his legs. So I'll just crop it like right here, like that. And then maybe you'll say, I need a close up of this guy here. He's at the table. It's just. I need a close-up of this guy, his neck, shoulders, he is leaning on the table, maybe he's got his plate here, glass here, uh, the other arm, and then here is the guy in the background. Now, the background, as you say, where's your, where is your camera at? So let's say the camera's like right here. Now, this guy is, let's just say he's six feet, he's sitting down. So the other guy is going to be six feet again and sitting down. Let's finish up his table. This is his table like so. So we're going to come here with the perspective and the guy is at the long table. So let's say we put some space there. And here's the long table with legs, of course. And so He's going to be sitting about right there. So there has to be like a connecting point because my table is off where as the head will be at the same height as the other guy's head. But my table is down, so I screw that one up. So we're just going to eyeball this and say here is shoulders. He's leaning on the table. chair and his feet and that's a little too short but you hopefully you'll get the gist of it and what did I say in the background there is a big painting of whatever a western scene because that looked like a old western bar or something and you have the horses riding uh, running don't ask me how to draw a horse because that's definitely a, a west this is a cow okay fine we'll have cows 
Hopefully you're still seeing what I'm drawing because I'm like way off. Some cow, a cow and a mountain and some clouds because it's a cheap painting. And uh, yeah, frame, so forth. Maybe in a restaurant there are, um, what do you call those things that they protect the wall from when you slide in your chair back. It's a, I can't think of what it's called, not a bumper, but, and then your scene is cut right here. But the thing is, you have to know what is in the background. Where are you? What's in the background? You do your, as I said, you do your floor plan. You know where the basic objects are. Find out what objects look like that you might need. Google, whatever, find them out. That way you can do details in the tables to say this table is uh, it's a luxury restaurant. So this table has like a frame around it, one of those little fancy smancy things on the side and nice uh, gold legs things like that you'd have to you'd have to work on nice china you zoom in on some of the china he's having a martini which is in a martini glass your forks and spoons on the right and the left so yeah all right, let me fix up that screw up that I did with the thing. Since these things are going to be going back in perspective, these tables, this table should have been like that as well. So this guy would have been going back in perspective. His shoulders would have been, which means his head would have been going back as well. So it should have been on that same line. The same way you do characters like that you have this guy here this guy here and the shoulders would be the same this guy here this guy here and that would be the same thing as somebody sitting down unless this guy was extremely tall or there was a, a little kid sitting down next to him at the table that would be the only reason that that person shouldn't would not be on that same line as him or her yeah and then your table if you had a table here it would be the same thing table goes back on that line chop it off here chop it off there chop it off there because usually restaurants try to keep their things um what is the word uh, not, it's got to do with military where everything is equal and even <sighs> something to do with uniforms it might pop up down here somewhere if I can't remember the name of it um, yeah I can't remember the name of it I'm still thinking of it trying to think of it but uniform yeah everything is in uh, did I say uniform everything is uniform in a restaurant with your chairs and all that has to go in perspective same line same thing with your people so even when you're sitting down it's just that i didn't want to do this with a pen because my pen is all over the place and you know i hate using a ruler so if you had to do it right it'd be like that this other one table would be table would be way over here this table would be there so those are things you have to plan out before you start drawing never draw on a pen never start drawing in a pen so, all right, so I would say the keys to doing backgrounds would be three or maybe four things. The first thing is, number one, know where you are. Know what your background is and where you are. Number two, know what the background looks like. And number three, what angle are you filming your background in? And as I did in the first one, because these tables, just like if you look at any picture and you follow the edge of something, it will, it will tell you where uh, your vanishing point would be by just following it all the way to, you have both sides of this table, follow it all the way till it becomes a point. And then all you have to do is take a ruler or something in, in a picture and you just draw a line and you follow those lines or side lines all the way down until the point and that away. Let's just say the point was here. Now you know where your vanishing point is and now you would know where to draw all your people at. So if this was this one, 
these tables because this table is off and this table is off I mean realistically it's off because I was drawing fast so this is your triangle that we did that I did in the first video so this table would go the same way as as I said earlier and this table it could be here and here but as long as it goes to this point it could be shaped like that where's the table go where's that right here like that and then that also determines your people which way your people are going to go as well so his shoulder would be more up than down so you'd see this arm here and then this arm here and you'd see some chest right there and then you'd see the head same thing with these guys and then you would determine where the guy's head is at because his shoulders determine but he's sitting sideways and I forgot all about that. He's sitting forward. So he would not be in perspective. So yeah, 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 yeah. I almost forgot about that. And the kid as well. But the keys, as I was saying, know where you are, where you're in a hotel, you're in a uh, garage, you're in a, a battleship, whatever. What does that place look like? Find your, your, your reference pictures. And then where is the camera gonna be placed? Is it gonna be up, down? Uh, to the side however and if you take your box and I'm seeing this and I'm, and I'm, I'm, I'm missing it I'm missing it bear with me bear with me and this one has a habit of going through and I don't want that messed up so if your camera was here your viewpoint was here your point was here your camera was here that's your eye line or your horizon line so everything would be up higher and I can't see to draw that something up higher my brain just froze for whatever reason you would be seeing the underside of something but what is that something it just froze for a minute so let me pause this and then get a drink of water or uh, something and come right back okay I am back and let's just forget everything that I said because yeah overwhelmed uh, I could easily cut that out the video, but I'm not because I want everybody to know I'm human. I fail too sometimes. So with that, let's do a recap. I went back over and I looked at some of the things and I was doing the shoulder and a lot of people who are new to perspective don't know that everything does not have to fall on this line. And I'm doing a lot like his shoulders. As long as it, the, 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 everything does not have to come off this point, like his shoulders would go to another point if you had a chair over here let's just say somewhere this one would go over to this point here so as long as all your points are on that same eye line horizon line you're good so that I just wanted to, to mention that because I don't want you thinking this guy's shoulders had to go to this point here uh, no they don't all right so let's recap and then I will close this one up and as I said know where you are and i talked about watching movies earlier it's really good to especially doing panels watch like if you like look at dragon ball or any kind of cartoon where the scene changes quickly turn your sound off completely off not just down and then watch it and then watch all your scenes change from one point to the other and ask yourself okay now why did they change to that one or why did they do a close-up of that one or why did they do an angle of that one and that's good for doing panels so once again know what where the person is what's in that room if it's a room what that stuff looks like it's good to draw it out and then you can chop it off or what parts you need and then use a light table and a light table is basically just a box with a light in it with a cover over it so you can put your picture on top and a blank piece of paper on top of that and then you can basically see through it just like you know you could see through some of the black and then you just trace it and a lot of artists do that and I had a friend that uses a light table now and he used to try to get me to do it and I was like oh that's cheating that's cheating but sometimes it's, not, it's really not cheating it's just some people use it that way so it's easy to draw and when I draw if I draw something I don't care about it comes out better than when I'm trying to do detail so it's easy to just light take a light box and then um, draw that so yeah and then you can crop out as I say the part that you need and don't need the rest
but it's good to know in your head that you know where the rest of the stuff goes to. So I think with that, your floor plan, you're able to turn it over and twist it. And uh, yeah, everything you draw is basically circles, not circles, yeah, circle and triangle, circle, square, rectangle as proven in this one and the other one. So with that, I will call this video done and I think I will do another one on two point perspective, but then it becomes a perspective video and not a background video because drawing the background is just, as I said, just a bunch of shapes behind your character and those shapes become whatever, trees, uh, uh, rocks, uh, whatever. So yeah, but I think I'll do another one a little later on background using the two point, maybe a little three point perspective, but I don't want it to be a perspective video. I want it to be key to drawing background. So with what you know now, that should be enough to get you started to do backgrounds. Have a get a folder in your computer or your laptop, name it backgrounds, go on Google and just search out things that you need, uh, horses, trees, junkyards, airplanes, and keep the pictures in the folder so that you can look at them and get the details off of the pictures of something you might need. So with that, that's going to be it for this one. And uh, give me a thumbs up because YouTube does look at that stuff. I didn't know that before. They do uh, look at the thumbs up, how many you get. That helps ranking because a lot of people say, oh, you need more views or more whatever. But when YouTube sees that you get a lot of thumbs up, then they look at that and they put your video up on their main pages. So help me out with that. Subscribe. And if you are doing comics, and you, are, you have helped doing comics, you and your friends, let these guys know, hey, I found this channel. This guy's really good. He's got good information. And you should check it out and have that guy subscribe. And if he knows friends, have him subscribe so this channel can grow because I still want to get 10 Talent Studios up and running off the ground full speed so I can hire artists to help out other artists and to do their work and to get their work published all under one banner of 10 talent studios so yeah help me out and i will help you guys out and i'm going to give a giveaway I'm going to do a giveaway maybe next week or so so stay tuned for that i'll give some more information on that later all right with that i am out see you guys later